All right, so we got more uh, work to do with the force equation, um, this time from the current density perspective. The statement reads, a uniform current density J equal J naught in the Z, direc Z direction fills a slab straddling the YZ plane from X equal negative A to X equal positive A. A magnetic dipole M equal mu naught, or not mu naught, M naught X hat is situated at the origin. A. Find the force on the dipole using F equal del M dot B. B. Do the same for the dipole pointing in the y direction, M equal M naught y hat. In the electrostatic case, the expressions F equal del P dot E and F equal P dot del times E are equivalent. Prove it. But this is not the case for the magnetic analogs. Why? As an example, calculate m dot del times b for the configurations in A and B. All right. Let's see what the slab looks like. It said it was straddling the uh, xy plane from x equal negative a to a. So it's a giant cube. Uh, it also told us that j was pointing in the z direction. So we're going up. And M was pointed in the X direction, or at least for configuration A. All right, fair enough. So for the magnetic field in this case, um, with the dipole point, dipole pointing in the X direction, the field is mu naught j naught x in the Y direction. Okay. Fair enough. We see that the current has to travel 90 degrees or orthogonal. The field has to be orthogonal to the current, so that makes sense. Um, so after that, we use the force equation with the unit vector directions, and we see that uh, x dot with y hat goes to zero, so the force is zero. That's pretty quick, pretty painless. Now, if we change the orientation of the dipole moment to the y direction, then we see that the dot product goes to one. And so if we apply the gradient operator onto all of these variables, we see that only one survives because it's a function of x and the derivatives of y and z go to zero, as you see with the uh, calculation carried through. So if the dipole is in the y direction, the force is equal to mu naught, m naught, j naught in the x direction. All right, again, that makes sense based on the fact that the, um, for the field has to be perpendicular to the current, and so the force would be something within that range as well all right so for c we see that from product rule four we have the gradient of p dot e is equal to all these possible interchanging of cross products and a couple of dot products all right fair enough here we said in the electrostatic case that del cross e equals zero okay the curl of e equals zero and there isn't a dipole and their dipole doesn't depend on x, y, or z, rather r prime and rho. So the derivatives of rho vanish. Okay, fair enough. So we say here that uh, the gradient of p dot e is equal to p dot del times e. Fair enough, that's pretty quick. So the derivatives don't play onto the e or p due to the coordinate system of choice. And we know that the curl of E is zero, so you're good to go there. Pretty straightforward, I would say. Um, all right, furthermore, now the argument does not apply to the magnetic analog since the curl of B does not equal zero. So if that was our hinging argument for the electrostatic case, that cannot be used here. And in fact, we say that uh, the gradient of M dot B is equal to M dot del times B plus mu m cross j. All right, so for the configuration A, we know that that was occurring in the x direction for the uh, magnetic dipole, and j was going in the z direction, so the cross product yielded something. And uh, we see here that after calculation, m dot, uh, m dot with the gradient times b is equal to m naught, uh, partial x of b is equal to mu naught or m naught mu naught j naught y hat and after further uh, evaluation for 
configuration of B, that yields zero. So you're good to go there.